Hello everyone. This video will be primarily interesting for beginner radio enthusiasts, as today I will be discussing four simple, interesting, and at the same time useful constructions, for which you don't need serious knowledge in electronics to create. Originally, there were five constructions. The fifth was an amplifier on germanium transistors, but just talking about it would take up half of the video, so we'll cover it another time. Before I begin, I would like to note a couple of points. This video is created solely for informational purposes, and is educational in nature. Many of the circuits presented in it have lost their relevance these days, but they are fully functional. Therefore, please refrain from comments like, nowadays, this can be done with a single chip that costs next to nothing. All the circuits in this video are taken from books and radio magazines. I will additionally specify the sources in the description. The third point is that I have developed printed circuit boards for almost all the circuits, which can be downloaded along with the project's general archive. I slightly modernized some of the circuits, and implemented them using modern imported components, as finding the original components might be problematic. Well, now, let's get started. The first circuit was published in the Radio Enthusiast's Bible, in Borisov's book, Young Radio Enthusiast, 8th edition, 1992 page 248, although it can also be found in earlier editions. It's an electronic nightingale, which can be used as a doorbell or a security alarm. I know you might have questions about the complexity, as this thing contains almost 60 components. But the subsequent circuits are much simpler. And with this circuit, it's not as complicated as it seems. If you pay attention, this circuit is essentially a few regular multivibrators, supplemented by a powerful output stage. With your permission, I redrew this circuit, replaced the transistor assemblies with regular transistors, and used imported components. I went a bit overboard with the medium power transistors BD139-140. You can use less powerful ones. Before we continue, let's listen to how it sounds. Turn down the volume on your phone or whatever device you're using, as it will be loud and possibly unpleasant. Well, yes, you can't expect some miraculous sound from such a simple thing but you can still achieve a more or less optimal sound if you play around with the values of the specified components. I didn't really bother with that. About the circuit's operation. In the lower part of the circuit, there's a push-pull low-frequency amplifier. For powering the multivibrators, the initial voltage is reduced by a parametric stabilizer. The stabilization voltage is set by the specified Zener diode. For multivibrators, operating at different frequencies create sound effects. Each multivibrator controls the operation of the previous one. The last multivibrator operates at a frequency of about 5 kHz. Its operation is controlled by the neighboring one. When the specified transistor of the multivibrator is open, it grounds the base signal of one of the transistors of the neighboring multivibrator, thereby turning it off. In turn, this multivibrator is controlled by the subsequent multivibrator. And so on. Thus, each multivibrator suppresses the operation of the neighboring one exactly at the frequency at which it operates. The volume of the sound is adjusted with the specified resistor. In my case, it is a trimmer resistor soldered onto the board. Any high-frequency speaker with 8 to 16 ohms will work. The power supply is 9 to 12 volts. It's convenient to use a 6 F22 format battery at 9 volts. I understand that bringing up half-century-old circuits isn't cool, but since our video is educational, it's worth getting acquainted with them. So, to implement the next design, we'll need some junk that many people, including myself, keep because it's a shame to throw it away. The good old germanium transistors of the MP series, on which a whole generation grew up. The equally famous medium-power transistors of the same period, and other small components. We will be assembling a simple stabilized power supply with adjustable output voltage and current protection, a good option for a beginner. And, yes, I am aware of the existence of IC regulators like 
the LM317. Let's continue. The design was presented in the fourth issue of the magazine Radio from 1974. The circuit is older than most of my audience. Everything we need is on the table, except for the transformer, rectifier, and smoothing capacitor. Right, I also forgot about the board. I made it just in case, maybe someone will decide to assemble it. You can download it along with the project's general archive via the link in the description. The board is simple and can be made at home on the fly. The input voltage of a circuit is 20, 24 volts, and the output is 12, 14. But by replacing the Zener diode with a higher voltage one, you can increase the output voltage. Operation of the circuit. In fact, the stabilizer itself is built on two transistors. The input voltage goes through a current limiting resistor to the Zener diode, which then opens. It will drop exactly the voltage it is rated for. The second transistor, in fact, amplifies this voltage and controls the power switch. And the variable resistor is a simple divider that changes the voltage at the base of the control transistor, causing it to open more or less. Well, from there, I think it's clear. That one already controls the power switch, and the last one controls the main voltage. The more the power transistor is open, the higher the voltage at the output. The left part of the circuit represents a protection device. A pair of diodes forms an analog of a low voltage center diode, and the resistor limits the current on them. The stabilization voltage of this improvised center diode is equal to the voltage drop across the junctions of the two diodes. This voltage is applied to the base of the first transistor. Initially, the transistor is closed because a positive voltage is applied to its base, and it is of PNP structure. In the event of short circuits at the output, the emitter of this transistor is shorted to the positive. The base voltage relative to the emitter becomes negative, causing the switch to open. The current limiting resistor for the Zener diode is connected in the collector circuit of this transistor, which results in a reduction of the negative bias on the bases of the stabilizer transistors, leading to their almost complete shutdown. As soon as the short circuit or overload is removed, the operation of the circuit, resumes, components, diodes, D101 can be replaced with similar ones, for example, D104. But these dinosaurs are long gone. And for modern ones, you can use, for example, diodes UF4007 and similar ones. The power transistor can be replaced with any from this series 215, 16, 17. It is important to mount the latter on a large heat sink, applying thermal paste beforehand. The input rectifier can be assembled using any four diodes, with a current preferably from one ampere. Common diodes like KD202 will work, but they are designed for high current, which might be overkill for this circuit. Although having a current reserve is never a bad thing, the transformer can be any mains transformer with a secondary winding of 16 to 18 volts and a current of about 1 to 2 amperes. The maximum output current of this stabilizer is claimed by the author to be around 0.3 amperes, but with an appropriate power transformer, you can draw up to half an ampere without significant voltage drop. This is more than enough to use this source as the battery equivalent and will cover most everyday needs. Before you is the simplest code lock that can possibly exist. It is electromechanical and, despite its simplicity, has many advantages. Firstly, it does not consume any current from the power source in standby mode. Secondly, the code can be made as complex as desired by adding more switches to the circuit. Yes, this lock is based solely on switches, but it also includes a power source with a switching relay. The latter allows for controlling any loads if the correct password is entered. Our lock consists of only five switches. Each of them has two states, either on or off. And this is nothing other than binary code. On is one, off is zero. The switches are connected to each other randomly. The correct cipher or combination will mean that the entire circuit is closed. Therefore, for this lock, the valid password would be 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. 
as already noted the number of switches and consequently the complexity of the code can be anything the switches can be practically any type with three terminals the main thing is that their switching current is higher than the current consumed by the load in this case the relay coils as a power source you can use any battery with a voltage of about 12 volts at the same time the voltage of the relay coil should also be around 12 volts automatic street lighting switch the circuit is also from borisov's book 8th edition 1992 page 315 i replaced some components with others that are more commonly used to be honest i debated for a long time whether to show this circuit or not but it's worth it for informational purposes important this circuit is dangerous because it is not galvanically isolated from the mains presented for informational purposes only all safety measures must be observed when working with mains voltage do not touch the working device and during setup always unplug it from the outlet if the circuit contains high voltage capacitors make sure they are discharged this simple circuit turns on the lighting when it gets dark and turns it off in the morning on the right side of the circuit there is a transformerless power supply with a ballast capacitor that provides current limiting then the mains voltage is rectified and smoothed a pair of zener diodes ensure stable voltage at the output the sensor is on the right side of the circuit the sensor is a photoresistor which is installed in such a way that direct sunlight does not fall on it together with the fixed resistor it forms a voltage divider in the presence of daylight the resistance of the photoresistor sharply decreases which causes the first transistor to activate as it is of the pmp type when the first transistor activates the second one will also activate the relay coil is connected to the collector circuit of the second switch and as a result the relay will also activate its contacts will open and the light bulb will turn off with the onset of darkness the resistance of the photoresistor sharply increases from 100 kilo ohms to mega ohms which will lead to the transistor being locked and the relay being released its contacts will close and the lamp will turn on The sensitivity of such a simple device can be adjusted by selecting the specified resistor or replacing it with a variable one. This device successfully operates both on outdated germanium transistors of the MP type and on silicon ones. For example, you can use common transistors like the 2N5401 or any other low power PNP structures. The power of the connected load depends on the relay's switching current. You can take a photoresistor, for example, from an old cheap film camera. Depending on the type of photoresistor, it may be necessary to select the specified resistor. Zener diodes can be any with a stabilization voltage of 8 or 9 volts each. They can be mixed, but keep in mind that the total stabilization voltage should be within 16 to 20 volts. The power of the Zener diodes is 1 to 2 W. The input capacitor is a film type with 0.33 to 0.5 microfarads at 400V. Install a discharge parallel resistor with 680K omega to 1M omega. All diodes in this circuit should preferably be 1 ampere with a reverse voltage of 400 volts or better yet, kilovolt rated. The specified diode provides protection for the transistor from reverse induction from the relay coil at the moment it is opened. This brings today's video to an end. If you enjoy videos like this, don't forget to leave a comment about it. I remind you that all necessary links, including the complete project archive with schematics and boards, can be found in the description. There will be a link to my Instagram, posting photos of new projects and lots of interesting stuff. As always, this was Kazyanov K. With you. Until next time. Goodbye.